Hey everyone, what's going on? My name is Tom O'Goy and today we're back once again for another Minecraft tutorial and this is going to be part 3, the final part of the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 restaurant build tutorial. So of course if you haven't checked out parts 1 and 2, it's kind of obvious, I'm going to recommend you do. In part 1 we focus on the exterior of the building, so building everything you see in front of us. In part number 2 we worry about the actual inside rooms and all the walls layout, all that good stuff. One thing I do want to point out is ignore the carpets, don't copy them. There is various carpets I've kind of put around the build and the reason behind that is just so I can hide some lights underneath them. So if I for example grab a black carpet, punch that one out, you can see there is lighting underneath and that's purely for video purposes because otherwise the room is a little bit dark for the camera uh, so I thought kind of to compromise on that we would add some lights in the floor and then of course I'll remove that once we are finished. Uh, so the way I've done this video because it is otherwise frankly going to be a logistical nightmare is I've split up all the different rooms into their own categories um, so I'm going to go room to room to room and therefore each room will have its own inventory checklist, each blocks you'll need etc uh, etc et and we'll do that on a room by room basis. Uh, but before we jump into that again I want to give credit where credit is due to the people who work extremely hard on this design so of course I want to start off with JPlays MC otherwise known as Infinite Vault who was the kind of original inspiration for the complete build and of course then Satori, Imran is called 5500 aka SNI Minecraft and also Taco Poopy who worked hard and made uh, some really nice adjustments and made it the build you see in front of us. So again shout out to all of them their channel information will be in the description below uh, as always if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel as I said in the previous video around 90% of the viewers on the channel are not currently subscribed uh, so if you can change that and help us heat the uh, 100k mark before the new year that would be greatly greatly appreciated and as always if you enjoy the video please let me know in the comment section down below and leave a like on the video uh, but without further ado let's get straight into the tutorial just before the video starts, I want to do a quick little plug. If you do enjoy my content and want to support the channel, please consider using my support a creator code in the Fortnite item store. That is G-U-M-M-M-Y-Y-Y, -M -M -Y -Y. so gummy with three M's and three Y's. This applies to all purchases on the item store. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps me create more regular content for you guys to hopefully enjoy. Okie dokie, so we are going to start off with the first room. The first room is going to be the main dining hall and this is going to be the colour code blue. Of course you don't need to worry about the colour codes, um, that's what I'm just using to help me out. Uh, so dining room is the first one and these are the blocks you're going to need for the dining room. So you're going to need black concrete, red wall, red concrete, block of quartz, yellow concrete, red concrete powder, orange concrete, lime concrete, light blue concrete, magenta concrete, prismarine bricks, dark prismarine, blue concrete, white stained glass paint, you're going to need stone brick stairs, acacia wood stairs, birch wood stairs, spruce wood stairs, red sandstone stairs, quartz stairs, purple stairs, never brick stairs, dark oak wood stairs, lots of stairs, birch wood slabs, quartz slabs, never brick slabs, acacia wood slabs, stone brick slabs, stone slabs, and then orange carpet, red carpet, light blue carpet, purple carpet, grey carpet, black carpet, white carpet, ender or I guess dragon head, so I was about to say ender dragon head, but just dragon head, we'll keep it simple, skeleton skull, iron bars, never brick fences, dark oak fences, birch fences, wooden trap doors, buttons uh, of both varieties, so stone and wooden. I'm going to grab as many of these into the inventory as possible and then we'll jump straight into building. Again the main things you're going to be needing primarily are the blocks and then the smaller details are going to be using the various carpets, slabs, all that good stuff. Uh, I will also grab the iron bars and fences because I know we'll need them and we're also going to start off by throwing a few buttons around so we'll also make sure to grab them as well. Uh, so again this becomes the tricky uh, situation of figuring out what is necessary and what not so much. So we'll grab that and as I said if we need any of those blocks we'll come back for them. Uh, but anyways let's head on into the main room, the dining room, the dining hall, uh, the room that we come straight into and from the left perspective we're going to start in the front left corner at this red concrete here. Now as I said ignore all of the carpets I've placed here, that's purely for lighting so the room's not dark, uh, so do not copy any of the carpets you see at this point in time. 
Anyways, what we're going to start off is we're going to be starting off with littering a bunch of different buttons around the floor. Uh, the actual design uses dark oak buttons, birch buttons, and also acacia. Uh, because I am playing on Xbox, I know, I know, you don't have to say. Uh, I only have access to these two, so we're going to be keeping it simple with the wooden buttons. So this is going to be a bit random, and it doesn't really matter how you do it. Uh, I'm going to chuck around a few. Uh, so we'll start off on the first layer. We're going to come to the fourth block and we're going to place a button. We'll also place a button in front of it and from here we're going to leave one, place one, leave one, place one, leave one, place one. We'll then leave two and then we run into our first issue uh, which is of course the fact that I've put lighting in the floor. So let's get rid of one more block. Uh, let's get rid of some of the carpets in fact and then what we'll do is we'll grab ourselves some of our black concrete powder uh, and again it just means I can replace the floor when needed so as I said here we'll leave two blocks we'll replace this one and then we'll place a button right there on top of this we're then going to leave one block we'll place one more and as you can see the first kind of area is going to look something like this going to the second layer now we're going to come to the third block we're also then going to leave a two block gap and place one, two, a three, and a four. And as I said, we'll keep it nice and simple. We're then going to leave a four block gap, so one, two, three, and four. And we'll place one, two, leave a two block gap, and place one more. So again, that's going to be the second row. For the next row, going back to the left side, we'll place one, two, straight away. Leave a one block gap, place one. We'll go to the next layer, second block, leave two, place one. So again, currently should be looking like this. It's not a massive thing, it's just kind of small additional detail. From this button here, we're going to go up to the right, up. We're then going to go up, one, two, to the left, down diagonal. So you can see we've placed two more. And then the final one in this section, we'll go back to this button here. We're going to go up one, one, two, to the right, and we'll place one like so. So again, currently should be looking something like this. It's kind of just a little bit more additional detail on the floor. Again, not uh, too important. So from this button that we've just placed here, we're going to go up and then up diagonal to right. Go one, two to the right and place one on the second block. From here, we're going to go forwards one, two and to the left and place one here. We're then going to go one, two, three to the left and place one here. So again, I'll zoom out so you can pause if necessary. Once again, it doesn't really matter if it's 100% perfect as long as you've kind of got the general vibe uh, spread out kind of equally uh, with a big gap in the middle where, of course, the tables are going to be. Going back to this button on the left side, we're going to go one, two forwards and to the right. We're then going to go diagonal. And then from here, we're going to go one, two, three. So we're on the second to last layer. We'll go one to the left on this blue one. We'll then go one, two, three to the right. One, two to the right and on the third one place a second one and then what we're going to do is we'll come to the top left corner and this is when we're kind of working our way to the corner on the other side we're going to go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen and on the sixteenth block we'll place a button on this blue concrete here one to the right down one down two and you'll have again a 15 block gap on the top left corner so for backup, again, currently should be looking something like this. What we're also going to do is we're going to come to the furthest out to the right button, so this one here, and we're going to build some more over towards the kind of middle center. So again, just for perspective, we've got the kind of little side bit here, and it's the first, second, and third row, and then the furthest one on the right. We'll leave a four block gap, so on the fifth block, this blue one, we'll place a button, go down diagonal, leave a three block gap, place one, up diagonal to the left, and then from here, we're going to go up once, twice, and the third time, we'll punch out this light, as I said, replace it with a button, and that's what we're going to do for now. So again, that's kind of the front left corner. Again, I'll give you a few different opportunities to pause. The front or the back left corner, should I say. And then, of course, we're now going to head over to the right side and start adding a few kind of in these corners. So reverting back to the blocks we put in the top right corner, this one here on the red, we're going to leave a four block gap, we'll place one. We're also going to go down diagonal to the left. Go back to this original block, we'll leave a one block gap. On the blue one, place one more. We're then going to go one, two, three forwards. And here we're going to go one. So again, like so. We're then going to go diagonal. Diagonal to the left and to the right. Again, if I back up, should be looking something like this. So again, if you want to pause, please feel free to do so. 
As we work our way forwards, we'll leave a one block gap. We'll go one, diagonal to the left, and forwards one. From this block here, we're then going to go one, two to the left, and up one on that blue block right there. So again, continuing our way forwards now, so we're going to the kind of front right corner. What we're going to do is we'll go forwards one, diagonal, diagonal to both the left and the right, so one, two, like so. On the right hand side, we're going to go forwards one, leave it, forwards one again, one, two to the left, and on the third block, place one button, and then we're going to go one, two forwards, and we'll place one right there, go diagonal twice to the right, to the right one, forwards once and twice, and that's going to be our final one. So again, I appreciate, probably not the easiest thing to start off with, but again, by far the least important. This is really just small details. Uh, if you mess up at all at this point, not a worry. So again, as long as you've got kind of a little scatter around the outer side, I've kind of just gone with the original pattern they used. Um, that's perfect. Again, if not, no worries at all. So the next thing we're going to be doing with the buttons is on the yellow and black entrances, we're going to do a solid ring around the entrances. And on the polished hand site here in the inner door, we're also going to place a row of three stone buttons, exact same on the other door. So it's mirrored on both the left and right door. Once again, on the polished hand site, and it's going to end up looking something like this. Now if we head back over to this side here, we're going to kind of work our way across the stage area. So next to the yellow concrete, we have this area of free black concrete powder. Once again, it is black concrete powder if you remove the lighting that I've kind of hidden. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves our iron bars and also our black concrete and also our stone buttons. And in this back left corner here, so again, we're going to have to grab ourselves the concrete powder. We're going to place an iron bar. We're going to bring it one forwards and one to the right. In front of this iron bar, we're going to place one, two, three black concrete, and in front of that, three stone buttons. To the left of this, we'll leave a one block gap. We'll then place two black concrete with two stone buttons, and that's going to be the speakers on the left hand side of the stage. Now, the next step we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves our dark oak fence. We're going to grab ourselves also our purple carpets. And what we're going to do is we're going to alternate. So we'll grab ourselves our dark oak. We're going to go diagonal to right from this black concrete here, and we're going to place a dark oak fence. We're going to leave one block, place one, leave one, place one, leave one, place one, etc. So we do this all the way across until we hit the other side of the stage. And on top of each of these uh, kind of fence posts, we're going to place a purple carpet. And it ends up, if you've done it correctly, uh, which I have not, there we go, ends up looking something like this. Now, what we're going to do on the right-hand side of the stage is actually very similar to what we did on the left-hand side. So we're going to start off in front of this black concrete here. So that's three blocks to the left of the yellow door. We're going to place one iron bar. We're going to go one to right, two to right, and backwards one. So once again, going to have to grab myself our uh, little black concrete powder. Place an iron bar behind it. In front of the iron bars, we'll place two black concrete leave a one block gap, and then up three black concrete with three stone buttons on the left side and two stone buttons on the right side. Once again, if you've done it correctly, the uh, one on the right side should be diagonal to the carpet, and you'll have a solid thing going across the middle. I don't really know what to technically call it, hence why I'm calling it a thing. Uh, I'm sure that's not the kind of technical name for it, uh, but that is the vibe we're going to be going with. Now, what we're going to do for the next step is in front of the stage, so you can see here the black concrete, then we've got all the dark oak, we're going to place a solid row of black concrete all the way across, linking the never brick slab on the left side to the right side. What we're then going to do is grab ourselves our never brick slab, and we're going to place on top of that black concrete a solid row of never brick slabs, linking again left to right, and in front of the black concrete a solid row of stone buttons. So again, it's all these kind of small little details that are really going to stand out in the final build, so again, make sure you have them done properly. The next step we're going to work on is going to be the curtains on the actual stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves our red wall and also our red concrete, Starting off with the red wall, we come to the left corner. Diagonal from this red concrete here, we're going to place one, two, three, four, five red wall. And then diagonal forwards, this block right here, we're going to place one, two, three. On the right hand side, going to be the exact same. So we've got the red concrete here, 
diagonal to left we're going to place one two three four and five and then diagonal forward to left one two and three and it's going to be mirrored on both the front left and front right side now of course there's going to be some scenery in the background uh, aka a cloud and uh, a sun or at least a few clouds and one sun <laughs> um, so we're going to grab ourselves our quartz block our quartz slab and our yellow concrete we'll also grab ourselves our never brick fence for good measure so we're going to start off on the far left corner we've got the polished diorite here we'll come to the second one and on top of the second one we're going to place a block of quartz from here we're going to go up to the left and to the right and it's going to give you this kind of small t-shape on the left side underneath we'll place a slab exact same on the right side and then in the top left corner and the middle we'll place a slab on top that's going to be our first little cloud what we're also then going to do is in front of the polished diorite underneath we'll leave a one block gap so under the uh, little black concrete powder we'll place one two three of our quartz slabs here and we'll place on top of the middle one one more and again that's going to be a second little cloud from this quartz block here or quartz slab we'll go up diagonal we're then going to place a row of four yellow concrete underneath it we'll leave a one block gap we'll place two above it we'll place four and then we'll leave a one block gap place two one block gap and it ends up looking something like this now for the final kind of little thing, uh, there is going to be a cloud in the front right corner, uh, but there's also going to be one hanging down from the ceiling. Uh, we'll get the one in the corner out the way quickly. So to the right of the yellow concrete here for the sun, we'll place a quartz on the lower half. We'll then place a quartz slab on top of that and a quartz block to the right of it. Again, just a small little detail, uh, but for the actual one in front of it, what we're going to do is we'll leave in front of the sun a one block gap and then here we're going to place one never brick fence with underneath it a block of quartz to the left of it on the lower half a slab to the right of it lower half a slab and then we'll go down and to the left and again that's going to be our little cloud and that's going to be the final little bit of detail that we're going to be adding to the stage area so again once you've done that if you want to pause you are more than welcome to do so please feel free uh, and then we're going to move on to the next section which is going to be kind of this little uh, almost like outer frame which is going to be going around the central dining area so let me grab myself our acacia slabs and also our red concrete powder what we're going to do is we're going to come to the corners of each of the floor so again that's the corners of each of the floor so the red concrete here for example and we're going to build up one two three four five six seven eight using red concrete powder and we're going to do this in each corner so again that's eight red concrete powder in that corner and again finally eight red concrete here uh, powder and finally the back right corner so four pillars in total what we'll then do is on the upper half of the block, so just under the polished diorite, we're going to do solid rows of acacia slabs linking each of the pillars together. And it's going to give you this kind of like almost divider, um, which isn't physical, but again, it kind of makes the center of the room stand out a little bit more uh, than the outer areas, which is, of course, part of the plan. So if I wrap around and finish placing the slabs, we'll then crack on with the middle area. So again, if I back up, it should currently be looking something like this. So, whoops, cloud in the way. Uh, corner in each one, red concrete powder, and then join together with the acacia planks of, uh, or acacia slabs, should I say. What we're then going to do is start adding some details. We won't really worry about the middle for now. We're going to start adding some detail around the sides, working our way around, and then uh, we'll come back to the middle area, as I said, and start adding some kind of tables and chairs later on in the video. So starting off at the front left corner of this area, we're going to come to the second block from the black concrete here. And this is where inventory management becomes an absolute delight. So I'm actually going to chuck out uh, some materials just so it's a little bit easier uh, for now. So we'll get rid of our fences um, and we'll keep, we'll keep the stairs for now. So starting off on this left corner, we're going to grab ourselves our concrete. So that being the red, orange, yellow, uh, lime and light blue. And we're going to place as simple as that one red one orange one yellow one lime and one light blue now on top of this we are going to grab ourselves acacia wood stairs red sandstone birch we're then going to place dark prismarine and also prismarine brick 
So starting from left to right, we're going to go upside down stair of acacia, upside down red sandstone, upside down birch, and we're going to place one dark prismarine and one prismarine. If you're on a platform that has the dark prismarine stairs and the prismarine stairs, crack on and use that. I'm unfortunately not, so hence we're using the blocks. What we're then going to do is on top of all the concrete, we're going to place a stone button, and as simple as that, that's a little detail on this front left corner. For the next step, we're going to grab ourselves our nether brick fence and our dark oak fence. We're also going to need our grey carpets, so we shall grab them hastily uh, and we'll pop it onto our inventory hotbar. Uh, what we're then going to do is we'll leave a one block gap and we're going to place right next to the pathway here one nether brick fence, one dark oak fence, one nether brick, one dark oak, nether brick, dark oak, nether brick. So again, we're alternating. Uh, between them and then on top of this we're going to place a solid row of our grey carpet so again solid row of grey carpet ends up looking something like this so again if you want to pause you are more than welcome to do so for the next part of the build we're going to mirror this on the other side of this kind of little walkway so again it's an alternation between the uh, the uh, never brick fences and also the dark oak almost forgot what they were called there for a second if you want to make it slightly shorter you can take off two as well uh, so you can have it five or seven in length it actually looks quite nice in five so we'll keep it at that but again you can extend it all the way across if you want it to kind of be the proper pathway then once we've done that we're going to grab ourselves our magenta concrete and also our light blue concrete and we're going to start building a big old kind of uh, present in the corner of course and uh, we'll start off in the light blue concrete we'll place one two a light blue concrete we'll then place two magenta in front of that two light blue working our way to the right side we'll place two magenta two light blue backwards two magenta light blue and two magenta we'll place one in the middle uh, just as not a hole and that's going to be the a little present uh, and then above this what we're going to do is we'll grab ourselves our quartz slabs Directly above the magenta block here, we'll leave half a slab uh, gap and we'll place one quartz slab to left and to right and then one up in the middle. What we're also then going to do is we'll grab ourselves our quartz blocks and back over towards the left side above the black concrete here on the left side of the door. Uh, in front of this red one directly above it, we'll place two quartz blocks, so one and then one to the right. And then to the left on the upper half of the block and above the original block, we'll place two slabs in total. And again, that's going to be kind of the continuation of the cloud theme wrapping around the building. So again, this is the front left corner. If you want to pause so far, you're more than welcome to do so. What we're then going to do is start making some progress on the carousel area. So starting off from the front right corner of the uh, present or the marionette box, whatever you want to call it, uh, you'll leave a one block gap. You're then going to place one, two, three yellow concrete. So one yellow concrete and two forwards. From here, if we're looking at it from a front perspective, we're then going to go diagonal to right, one, two forwards. Diagonal to left, one, two to the left, diagonal backwards, and then one, two backwards. In the middle, we're going to place a inner ring of blue concrete. So again, that's going to be a three by three square of blue concrete, with the one block in the middle being a red concrete. So that's going to be the base of the kind of little carousel. What we're then going to do is grab ourselves our spruce wood stairs, and we're going to start on the front side as if you've just come in the door. So from the front side... We're going to place, and this is going to be tricky, so we'll have to place a block behind, an upside down spruce wood stair in the back left corner. We're then going to place an upside down spruce stair facing towards the wall on the second block. On top of the block we have just placed, or the uh, stair we've just placed, we'll place an orange concrete. And then behind this we'll grab ourselves our orange carpet, and we're going to place an orange carpet directly on top of the back stair. Now, if you're on PC, the beautiful thing about this is you'll be able to get some custom modded skulls. Uh, at this point, you'd put a Freddy skull there. If you want to add the skull still, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, it just doesn't look quite as cool if you start doing stuff like that. It kind of kills the uh, look a little bit. So we won't worry about it for now. But as I said, if you're on uh, PC, feel free to use the custom skulls. Or if you're using mods, again, crack on with that. What we're then going to do is rotate around to the side. So we're going to grab ourselves our red sandstone stair we're going to place a red sandstone stair facing towards the right side and then directly above this we're going to place a yellow concrete behind this we'll then grab ourselves our birch slabs and on the lower half behind the yellow concrete and the upper half of the stair we'll place two birch slabs and then directly above the yellow concrete we'll place a dark oak fence 
Once again, if you're on PC, you could then place a Chica Skull right on that block that I've just placed there, uh, and that will look fantastic. Again, if you're not, not the end of the world, uh, it doesn't matter too much. For the next one, coming around to the kitchen side, we're going to grab ourselves our purple stairs, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have chucked into a chest and forgotten about and not shown much love or appreciation to. So we will hop back uh, and again, I'll figure out what we can chuck out. We also need our light blue carpet. So we're going to grab ourselves our purple stairs. Once again, it's going to require a block to place off the back as we're going to place a purple stair upside down facing towards the right side. And then we're going to place a purple stair upside down facing towards the left. On the right side, we're going to place ourselves a light blue concrete and then directly behind this, a light blue carpet. On top of it, we're going to place a dark oak fence and that's going to link to the top of the carousel area. Once again, if you're playing on a platform with skulls, uh, feel free to pop a bonnie skull right about there, and it will look marvellous. Again, if not, no worries. For the final side, which is going to be the foxy side, uh, we're going to place, once again, a blocked place off the back. Back left corner, we'll place an upside down spruce stair, and then next to it, we'll place an upside down spruce stair facing into it. We're then going to place on the right side a red concrete, and on the left side, which I have, of course, uh, not brought with me, is going to be the red carpet. So let me grab the red carpet, uh, and then we'll place that. So again, that's going to be on the uh, spruce stair directly behind it. You don't need to join it to the top. That's going to be your foxy. And again, if you want to place a skull right there, please do so. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to grab ourselves a birch fence. Uh, fingers crossed I actually put it in the chest. We did indeed beautiful. Uh, so we're going to grab ourselves a birch fence and right in the middle on top of this red concrete here we're going to place one, two and three birch fences and on top of that we're going to place a red concrete. Around the red concrete we're going to do what we did before so we'll place an outer ring of uh, blue concrete so it's going to be a three by three square of blue concrete and then around that we're going to place three yellow concrete on each side and as you may have noticed uh, the ones that have the fences sticking out the top aka V Chica and Bonnie are going to link up to the top that is intentional what we'll then do on top of this is we'll add some kind of small details uh, so starting off around the outer ring so the yellow concrete we're actually going to place a row of a light blue carpets all the way around so again light blue carpets all the way around the outer ring what we're then going to do is we're going to grab a random block so let me grab lime or magenta concrete we'll go magenta and in each of the middle blocks we're going to place a magenta concrete and the reason behind this is because we're then going to grab ourselves our quartz stairs let's not chuck that out quite yet and we're going to place facing away from the blocks on either side a quartz stair so again that's from the front perspective you're going left and right and then we're going to punch out the magentas and in between the quartz stairs, we're going to grab ourselves a quartz slabs and we're going to place a quartz slab on the lower half of each block uh, in the middle. What we'll then do is grab ourselves our birch slabs and on top of each of the quartz stairs, we're going to place a birch slab. And in between the birch slabs, we're going to place a red concrete. So you can kind of see how this is piecing together quite nicely. In between the red concrete at the very top, we're going to place a yellow concrete and then what we'll do just to cap it off uh, is we're going to place a skull, a skeleton skull, uh, just at that kind of central top point. Uh, so let me grab the skeleton skull. We'll pop one right on the yellow concrete at the very top and that's going to be perfect. We'll actually have it facing towards the rear side just so you can't actually see the face uh, just because it looks a little bit nicer as you can see. Again, a nice kind of little pointed uh, tip for the top of the carousel area. So again, I'll do a little spin around. If you want to pause, you're more than welcome to do so. That's going to be the carousel area. What we'll do is we'll crack on now with the kind of details in the back corner. And then what we'll do is move on uh, then ultimately to around the area here. So almost like the little gift area. Um, and then, as I said, we'll continue looping around this room. So starting off, we are going to come to the area here which if I grab myself the stone brick stairs and stone brick slabs, we're going to place a stone brick stair upside down facing towards us, just to the right of this doorway here to the kitchen. We're then going to place two stone bricks, and then we'll place a stone brick stair again to the right of that, so it's going to be a four-wide uh, area. I'm oh, sorry, five wide, so we'll do it one more, and then we'll place a third stone brick in the middle, so like so. 
What we're then going to do is on, in line with the stair here, we're going to leave a one block gap. So one block here, and then we got the two here. And we're going to do another one of the kind of little colored rainbow uh, the little stands. So we're going to need our blue, orange, red, uh, light green. And what we'll do is we'll start off by placing two light blue concrete. We're then going to place two orange concrete, two yellow concrete, two lime concrete, and two red concrete. So again, looks something like this. And then, as I said before, we'll place all the corresponding colours on top. Uh, so starting off with the red concrete, we'll place acacia wood stairs, again, upside down. So acacia wood stairs upside down. To the right of this, because we are on Xbox, we're going to be placing the prismarine blocks uh, rather than the stairs. So we'll grab ourselves our dark prismarine. Uh, again, let's chuck away a few different materials we won't be using. Uh, so we're going to place on top of the lime green, we'll place two dark prismarine. Uh, if you have the stairs, use those. Next to that, we're going to use our birch stairs. So again, upside down birch stairs. Next to that, we're going to use our red sandstone stairs. So again, upside down red sandstone stairs. And then finally, we're going to be using our prismarine uh, bricks because, of course, we don't have the stair equivalent. Now, on the uh, concrete at the bottom, we'll place a solid row of five buttons on either side. Uh, and that's going to require me, as you can see, to punch out the little carpets I have here with the lights. Uh, as otherwise, I won't be able to place the buttons. So it ends up looking something like this. Again, this back corner, uh, relatively empty. But that's, of course, because it's going to be leading into the kitchen area where there's going to be a lot more detail. So heading around to the little stand area here. We're going to start off next to the grey concrete by placing a red concrete. Leave a one, two, three block gap and place one more red concrete. What we're then going to do is we're going to grab ourselves our white stained glass panes and also our red carpet. So again, we'll chuck away a few different blocks. We'll grab our red carpet and in between the red concrete, we're going to place three white stained glass uh, panes. We'll then place a row of five red carpet going all the way across uh, the top, so linking left side to right side. What we'll then do for the final bit is we'll grab ourselves our acacia wood slabs, and on the lower block, so the first row, on the upper half of the block, again, we'll have to punch out this uh, little block here, uh, we're going to place a row of acacia slabs. We're then going to come in line with the top of the white block here and place a second row, and then we come in line with the top of this first grey block and again place a third and final row. Now if you're on, again, PC, please feel free to put some kind of uh, skulls on the shelves, make it look a little bit more interesting. Um, and again, they're kind of like the little prizes. Uh, if you're on console, you, you could put flower pots maybe or just general skulls, up to you. Uh, but again, it's still relatively plain and simple. What we're also going to do is we're going to grab ourselves, I don't believe uh, I have white concrete, so I'll just do it here. We're going to change the floor uh, to the white and black checkerboard pattern. Uh, so again, starting off with white in the back left corner before I forget. Uh, and then we're going to alternate between the white and black concrete, as you can see here. Underneath the glass panes, we'll keep it as the black concrete powder. But that's going to be the little gift shop area at the back here. Uh, what we'll then do, or the prize area should I say, is on the grey concretes we'll place rows of buttons going all the way up uh, the left side, like so, and the right side, and you can see it ends up looking something like this. For the next step, we're going to head over to the right side now, and we're going to start building some of the booth seating areas. Uh, so for this, we'll grab ourselves our light blue concrete. We're then also going to grab our acacia wood stairs our stone slabs which i don't believe we have uh oh we do so we have our slabs uh we'll also grab our prismarine uh we'll get that out of here and we'll grab our never brick slabs we'll grab some black carpet which of course i do not have on me and also some purple carpet so again black and purple carpet is what we're going to need so let's grab them onto the hot bar and then we'll crack on with some seating so we're at the back right corner of the build currently. In this first uh, block here, we're going to place one, two, three light blue concrete. And on top of that, we'll place a second row with a row of three stone slabs on top of it. 
what we're then going to do is place a row of acacia wood stairs facing towards the right side. From here, we're going to have to punch out this light. So we'll get rid of that. And we're going to place a row on the upper half of these two light grey concrete powders of never brick slabs. Facing into that, we'll place three acacia wood stairs. And then behind it, we'll place two rows of three light blue concrete with a row of stone slabs on top. What we'll then do is on the rear of the table, we'll place two black carpet, followed by two purple, followed by two black carpet, and it ends up looking something like this. That's the only booth we're going to place on this side of the room. Uh, what we will do whilst we're here is we'll grab ourselves our stone buttons, and we're going to do a ring of stone buttons around this door uh, that goes into the Pirate's Cove area. Feel free to put something here as well if you want to kind of fill in with a little bit of detail. Uh, but for now, if I back up, again, it should currently look something like this this. So the next step we're going to crack on with is going to be the seating in the main dining area. So again the seating in the main dining area. So what we're going to do is for this we are going to need our never brick stairs which again I don't believe we have so we'll grab those. We're also going to need the trap doors and also some white carpet. So again a few different blocks. Uh, also our dark oak stairs and we'll also grab, uh, if we have them, which I don't think we actually do, uh, which was a mistake on my end, some dark oak slabs to go in the middle uh, to link the actual tables together. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off in the front corner on the fourth block here, which is going to be the blue concrete with the button on top of it. From here, we're going to go one, two, three forwards and one block to the right, and you should have this button right there on the blue concrete. To the right of this, we're going to place a never brick uh, stair facing towards the right side. We'll leave a one block gap, place a second, leave a one block gap, and a third. What we're then going to do is off the side of this, we're going to place three dark oak uh, wood uh, stairs upside down. We'll link them in the middle, so we now have a row of five. And what we'll then do is on the upper half of the block, we'll place a row of five dark oak slabs. We'll then leave a one block gap and we're going to place facing towards the left side three never brick stairs once again with a one block gap in the middle and then off of that we'll place our upside down uh, stairs on the right side and what it's going to give you if we come around uh, whoops that's because it's got a carpet on of course uh, if we get rid of the carpet so we'll swap it out for a red concrete uh, we will then have something if I actually place it correctly that looks like this. You can see we've got an upside down stair with a slab and an upside down stair and it gives you this kind of table effect. On top of all of the um, chairs we're going to place a trap door and then fold it upwards so that's going to be kind of like the backing to the seat and then what we're then going to do is place white carpet all the way across the table as kind of a little table cloth. Ends up looking something like this. Again, that's going to be your first table, just for a perspective again as to where it is. Start off in the front left corner, count one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three forwards, that's going to be your first chair. We're going to rinse and repeat this. However, we're going to leave a one block gap in between each time. So we're going to go one, two, three. Then there's going to be the three table blocks, one, two, three. And again, the table will be in the middle. We'll leave a one block gap. And again, one, two, three. One, two, three for the table. And again, if there's any buttons in the way, just remove them. That's completely fine. That's going to be our second and third table. Now, with regards to the second row of tables, we'll leave a three block gap. So again, we'll leave a one, two, three block gap. And then we're going to go one, two, three. And again, we'll do the building of the tables off camera just to save a little bit of time. One block gap and then three block gap for the table and then one block gap. And that's going to be the six tables in total. So again, I've kind of just laid out where they're going to be. Uh, make sure there's nothing impeding where the actual table itself is going to be. Uh, so just make sure there's no, uh, in my case, carpets. But your case, there may be uh, buttons and stuff like that in the way. Just make sure that's not the case. Uh, and then, yeah, once you've done that, as you can see, just a little bit of clearing up to do. Uh, I'm going to pause the video here build the remaining five tables. Uh, I'll actually zoom up just so you can kind of see where they are, where they're positioned. So in the back right corner, you should finish kind of two diagonal away from the back right corner. So I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to build all the remaining tables just not to bore you. And then we'll be back in a moment uh, with the next step, which is, of course, going to be the tables on the right side of the building. Alrighty, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and built all the six tables. They're all kind of neatly packed in to this area. 
Uh, and again, six tables in total, pretty easy to build. Uh, it's pretty much just a rinse and repeat for the uh, designs, just making sure they're one spaced apart and three spaced apart for the second row. So once you've done that, we're going to crack on now with the row of seats here, and then that's pretty much going to wrap up uh, the room minus a few details with the upper ceiling over here. So we're going to come to the door to the Pirate's Cove area. To the right of this, we're going to place a row of free light blue concrete, followed by a row on top of this with a row of stone slabs on top of that. We're then going to place to the right of it three acacia wood stairs. We'll then grab ourselves our never brick slabs and we're going to place again in line with the top of the light grey concrete a row of three never brick slabs with three acacia wood stairs facing towards the side. To the right of that we're going to place three light blue concrete with a second row on top and a row of stone slabs and we're going to rinse and repeat this twice more. So again three acacia wood slabs. We'll then place a three by two of never brick slabs with acacia wood stairs facing into it two rows of free light blue concrete with a row of our stone slabs on top and then one last time three acacia wood slabs two never brick slab rows of three a row of free acacia slabs and our final row of free light blue concrete times two with a row of stone slabs on top what we'll also do before i forget and something i almost forgot to do in the previous video is we'll place two quartz slabs just in the doorway right there what we're also going to do is we'll grab ourselves, which I don't actually have in my inventory, which is marvellous, our black carpet and also our purple carpet. Uh, I had the black, just not the purple. Uh, and again, just like we did previously, we're going to hop on over to the tables and we're going to go black, purple, black, starting at the back. Uh, so black, purple, black. And we're going to do this on all three tables, just as kind of a little table cover theme. And once you've done that, it ends up looking something like this. So again, if you want to pause, you are more than welcome to do so. So again, this is the room so far. I'll do a little spin around. You can see lots of details, lots of action packed in everywhere. Uh, the one thing we are missing is, of course, the part that hangs above the ceiling, uh, which is almost like at the front of the stage, uh, I think is the best way to probably describe it. Uh, so we'll crack on with that, and then that's going to wrap up the dining hall room once we've done that of course we're then going to move on to the next room so we'll work our way around the building uh what we're going to do is we will grab and again i don't think i actually have the blocks we're going to need our stone brick stairs our stone brick slabs our cobblestone wall which i don't actually think i even have again another block that i've uh forgot to grab into my inventory and our dragon head or ender dragon head whatever you want to call it what we're then going to do is we'll come to this light directly in the middle. So again, directly in the middle. In front of the acacia slabs, so these two here, we're going to go one, two to right, and we'll place a cobblestone wall. And we'll then go one, two, three, four, five, six to the left, and we'll place a second one. We'll then place a stone brick stair upside down facing towards the left. A stone brick stair upside down facing towards the right and in fact an easy way to know if you've done it correctly is it should line up just to the right of this red concrete on the left side and just to the left of the red concrete on the right side so again blocks like so underneath this we'll place a row of stone brick slabs linking the left side to the right side and we'll also join them on the upper half placing again a second row of slabs like so for the actual ender dragon skulls themselves, I can't actually remember how you place them. So what we'll do is we'll do a row of slabs, and then if we need them, we need them. If we don't, we don't. Uh, and then we're just going to place a row on top of those slabs behind of our ender dragon skulls. Um, and what it will give you is almost this weird almost projector kind of lighting effect. Um, so, of course, when you have a stage, you also have the lights. Uh, so that's the idea of that. Hopefully they won't fall. They haven't. That's perfect. Um, again, that's going to be like the kind of lights and cameras and everything facing on TV stage. Uh, so that's perfect. That's going to be hanging from the ceiling, again, centered towards the stage area. And yeah, that's the final step for this uh, first primary area. So what we'll do is we'll clean out the inventory and then we're going to crack on with the next area, which of course I've color coded. Uh, so we'll jump into that in a moment. Again, let me just clear this up. And yeah, let's head outside. So the next area we're going to be working on is going to be 
the repair slash storage room. So this is going to be the green one, of course. We're going to need for this section stone bricks, stone brick stairs, stone brick slabs, dark oak stairs, uh, dark oak slabs, stone slabs, iron bars, cobblestone walls, stone buttons, acacia fences, string, and grey carpet. So again, not too much of an inventory challenge this time round, which is always nice. Um, and as I said, we're going to be coming to the repair slash storage room, which in the door is directly to the right, this little green room over here. So we're going to head on into here, as I said, should be looking something like this. We're going to start, so if you come in the door, in the far left corner, we'll leave a one block gap, two block gap, and we'll also, again, we're going to need the black concrete, because of course I've punched out a few holes in here. Uh, and on the third block, so this white one, we're going to grab ourselves our stone brick stairs. We're going to place one to the left and one to the right. And we're going to repeat this once, twice, three times, four. And then for the fifth and final time, we're going to place it upside down. So again, for the top one, it's going to be upside down. For all the ones below it, it's going to be just normal facing towards the right on the left side. And then on the... Um, Final one, we'll actually just place two slabs on top. So we won't do stairs, we'll just do two slabs on top. What we're then going to do is up from this top right corner, we're going to go up diagonal. We're going to place one cobblestone wall. We're then going to place two iron bars to the right of that. Two cobblestone walls with an iron bar below it. To the right of that, we'll place one cobblestone wall with two iron bars on top of it. So we're alternating. We're then going to place a row of cobblestone wall all the way to the bottom minus one block we're then to the right of this going to place a stone brick stair two stone slabs two more stone slabs with a stone brick slab on top to the left of this we're going to place a stone brick to the right of it we'll also place a stone brick underneath it we're going to place an upside down stone brick stair and underneath that, a normal stone brick stair. On the right side, underneath the stone brick, once again, an upside down stone brick stair. And on the two stone slab bricks in the middle, uh, we're going to place two stone buttons. We'll also extend the cobblestone wall down one more, just so it's actually touching the floor. To the right of this, we're going to do the exact same. So we'll start off by removing that. We're going to place a normal stone brick stair, followed by two stone slabs and a stone brick stair. Above the stone brick stairs, we'll place two upside down ones. And then above that, we're going to place a row of three stone brick slabs. Underneath the stone brick slab in the middle, we'll place a double stone uh, slab, like so. And then we'll place two buttons on that. And again, we'll actually replace these. Whoops, didn't mean to do that, that is for sure. <laughs> Let me fix that real quick. Um, that's the kind of pain with using the cobblestone, or not the cobblestone, the concrete powders, is they will fall if you smash them. Uh, we'll replace these two with our stone brick slabs, so it's just nice and equal. Ends up looking something like this in the corner. Going back to the top corner with the cobblestone wall, we'll leave a one block gap. We'll then place two cobblestone wall and two iron bars. To the right of this, we'll leave a one block gap, and then we'll place two iron bars and one cobblestone wall. So once you've done that, it ends up looking something like this. For the next section, we are going to come to the right-hand side of the room, so to the right of the door, the right of the entrance. We'll come to the second white concrete here. We're going to grab ourselves our dark oak stairs. We're going to place a dark oak stair upside down facing towards us. One, two, three of our slabs on the upper half and a dark oak stair facing towards us. We'll then leave a one block gap and we'll repeat this. So again, upside down dark oak stair either side with three slabs in the middle. And we'll do that one more time. So leave a one block gap, upside down stair, three slabs on the upper half and an upside down stair. So that's going to be shelves on that side of the room. There'll be a two block gap on the left. So on this wall, we're going to leave a two block gap. And in line with what we've just done, we're going to repeat the exact same. So again, it's going to be three tiers of our stairs and... Uh, slab combo so again we'll have to get rid of the light apologies if it is a little dark on the video hopefully it's kind of still easy to see or easy enough should I say uh, what we'll actually do is I'll grab myself a uh, sea lantern or any other light source doesn't really matter and we'll pop one just to the right here and then we'll pop a, a little black carpet over it just so it's not 
uh, kind of in our face, but still gives us a little bit of light. Perfect. We'll also uh, grab one in the corner here. Again, just to make things a little bit easier to see. So again, from a corner angle, looks like this. Two block gap on each one in the corner. The next step we're going to work on is a little table in the middle. So for this, you're going to need your acacia fence, your string, and your grey carpet. What we're going to do is we're going to start off in line with this stair here. We're going to leave a one, two block gap, and we're going to place an acacia fence. From here, we're going to place a row of three blocks of string, and then to the right of it, an acacia fence. On top of all of this, we're going to place five blocks of grey carpet in a kind of C shape. We're then going to leave a two block gap to the left and in line with what we've just done we'll place one acacia fence, one string, one acacia fence and on top of that we'll place three blocks of grey carpet and that's going to be your second and final table. So again I'll give you a few different looks of the room just so you can pause as you need to do so. Again please do take your time uh, but that is again our second room complete and that's going to be nice and easy. So again, a few different views, and then we'll crack on with the next room, which is going to be the safe room. So let me shoot on outside, if I can find my way out. This is going to be the grey one, so the safe room. You're going to need cyan terracotta, spruce leaves, stone brick stairs, cobblestone wall, iron bars, signs and buttons. Again, as always, I'll grab myself black uh, concrete and black carpet, just for the purpose of destroying things. Uh, and what we're also going to do is we're going to punch in, um, whoops, that's not the way I want to punch in. We're going to punch in the ceiling, and I've just deleted it. <laughs> that's good. So, again, cobblestone wall, we'll grab our spruce leaves. So, spruce leaves, iron bars, uh, we'll then grab some signs, our stone brick stairs. Luckily, I'm finding these pretty quickly, so not wasting too much time. Sign terracotta, stone buttons. Again, as I said before, black concrete, carpet, and we will then uh, grab ourselves some stone slabs. And as I said, the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to bust a big old hole in the ceiling. So punch through here. The reason I say to come through the ceiling is because obviously if you punch through the wall with everything being gravel, you're going to have an absolute nightmare on your hands with the walls collapsing in on you and all that kind of rough stuff. So we're going to factor in the door here. Directly to the left of the door, we're going to start on this wall. So we're going to leave a one block gap, and we're going to place one, two, three cobblestone walls to the right one, and then up one, two, three, and four to the top, like so. What we're then going to do is, above this cobblestone wall here, we'll leave a one block gap. We'll place one spruce leaves, one to the right, and up one, and place a second spruce leaves, like so. Go back down to the floor, to the right of the cobblestone wall, we'll place one spruce leaves, go up diagonal and place two. To the right of this, we'll place one, two, three iron bars. We'll go to the right one and up one, and it should end next to the red concrete powder, and it should end up looking something like this. That's going to be the left side of the room. If we head around to this side here with the kind of spruce uh, parts, we're going to grab ourselves our cyan terracotta. We'll leave this block in the corner. We'll place one sign terracotta, leave a one block gap, one sign terracotta, one block gap, one sign terracotta. And then on this area, this is where it's kind of tricky, uh, and I've almost forgot uh, the fact that this would be an issue. We'll grab ourselves our spruce slabs, and we're going to double up all the slabs directly behind these blocks. We'll place our three stone brick stairs upside down, and then we'll have to go back and replace these slabs afterwards, uh, just so they're still slabs. Again, you'll need the full block, though, for the upside down stair. On all these sign terracottas, we'll place a button, so a stone button to be more precise. And then all the remaining uh, slabs, we'll go ahead and place a sign on. So it's kind of giving you this almost like boarded up look. That's the intention, at least. Um, and you can see it's, again, a really nice look. We'll punch out the two blocks here, um, and then we'll place three on the top layer. We'll leave a one block gap, and then we'll place two. Again, just so it's not kind of too mirrored and too perfect, uh, if you get what I mean. We'll then come to the far right corner. Above this block here in the corner, we'll place a spruce uh, leaves. We'll go up diagonal to the left and up one. Leave a one block gap and then go up one more. In this top corner, we'll grab ourselves our cobblestone wall and we're going to place one, two, three, and four. Directly in front of the red concrete powder, we'll then go one, two forwards and then we'll bring it, uh, or one forward, sorry, and then we'll go down one, two, three to the floor. And that's going to be this side of the room. So again, if you want to pause, 
you are more than welcome to do so. If we head around to the right side now, this part here, of course we've just started with the cold stone wall. We'll grab on top of that as spruce leaves and go up diagonal to the right like so. What we'll then do is we'll leave a one block gap to the right, we'll build up one, two, we'll go to the right one and then we'll go up one, two, three, four and five to the top of the ceiling. And then starting in the top of the ceiling, we're then going to place one, two, three of our iron bars just coming down to the top row of the gravel and that's going to loop around to the final side of the room uh, which we'll work on now. So from these iron bars we're going to go down or to the right one, we're then going to go down twice and then to the right twice. In the middle one we're then going to go down once twice to the floor, to the left of it we'll place two cobblestone walls and again this is where I need to grab myself uh, some white or some diorite sorry, almost said white concrete, uh, some polished diorite just to replace the floor. So we'll place a cobblestone wall, like so. Uh, above the iron bars in the middle, we're going to go up one, two to the right, and then one, two to the top. Underneath the uh, cobblestone wall here, we're going to place an iron bar. We're going to go to the right one, and then up one, two, three to the top, like so. We'll then grab ourselves our spruce leaves. To the right of this iron bar here, we'll place two spruce leaves, down diagonal to the left, like so. That's going to be the final wall like that. Uh, there is going to be a few little bits we're going to place in the middle, uh, kind of hanging down from the ceiling. Uh, easiest way to explain that, we'll come to the middle light, directly behind it, so where this redstone block is, which we'll cover up in a moment, uh, we'll place a spruce leaves uh, directly next to the slab. So we'll punch out the slab, place the spruce leaves. Underneath that, we'll place an iron bar, and to right of it, another iron bar. To the left of the iron bar, we'll place a spruce leaves, and we'll go down one block, We'll also bring the iron bar down one block, like so. Now, in terms of the next step, we'll come to the light. So again, the middle light. One block forwards. From here, we're going to go down one, whoops, two, and three. If I can actually place the blocks. So again, that's one, two, and three. Small little hitbox. And then behind that, we'll place a spruce leaves. So again, that's going to kind of link up with the other section. And then one final uh, little detail, I guess we can just chuck, we'll place directly in front of this cobblestone wall, again, one more spruce leaf. So again, it's a little bit random when it comes to the kind of top details. What we'll then do is also break out through the roof, just so we don't break anything further. And then, of course, we're going to have to swap out this redstone. Uh, this one, where is it? I've lost it. I'm breaking everything. Uh, this one right here above the leaves. Uh, and then we'll have to grab an alternative uh, redstone block and just place it. Basically, it's not messing with the leaves directly below. So if I break in now, you'll see everything's working perfectly. You can't see through the ceiling. That's great. And that's what we're looking for. This is going to be the safe room. And again, if you want to pause, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, we're now going to move on to the next room which is going to be, if I can escape here, the restrooms slash bathroom. So again, let me clear my inventory out. Um, and this is going to be the purple chest. So we're making really good progress on the magenta chest, should I say. So almost halfway at this point. Uh, for this, you're going to need light blue terracotta, magenta, stone brick stairs, quartz stairs, spruce doors, hoppers, birchwood slabs, iron trap doors, and grey carpet. As always, I actually can't remember what blocks I used in this one uh, for the floor. So it's going to be polished diorite. So we'll grab ourselves polished diorite just on the off chance we actually need to replace uh, some of the floors. We're going to come into the left bathroom first and we'll start making some progress here. So starting off, first things first, in front of the packed ice here, we're going to place a row of quartz stairs. So we're going to place two facing towards each other and then we'll place one facing towards the black concrete at the back. If you want to be fancy, you can place a bucket of water uh, behind it. I'm not sure if it works on Xbox. We'll soon find out. Uh, it does not, alas. So, yeah, uh, if you're on PC, try and place water behind it. Looks cool. Looks like a sink. That's the plan. Uh, and then either side of the ice, we're going to place an upside down stone brick stair with a grey carpet on top. So, again, with a grey carpet on top, that's going to be the little sink area. If you want to pause, please feel free to do so. This is going to be the pink toilet. Uh, so what we're going to do is starting off on the left side, we're going to place on the second block up two magenta terracotta and then two on top. We'll leave a one block gap, place a two by two, one block gap, two by two 
and one block gap two by two. So there's going to be three cubicles in total. On top of everything we've just placed, we'll place birch wood slabs. So again, that's birch wood slabs. And then we're going to go diagonal downwards and in between all of them place another row of birch wood slabs. Underneath all of the things we have just placed, uh, we are actually missing blocks. <laughs> so we're going to grab ourselves some stone slabs. So some stone slabs. And we're going to have to replace that in the corner because of course we are. Uh, and we're going to place underneath uh, all of the magenta terracotta two stone slabs underneath each um, and again that's going to kind of wrap up the bottom bit second to last thing we're going to do toilets so in facing the bottom blocks so the white concretes on all of these we're going to place a hopper and on top of that we are going to place an iron trap door so iron trap door on top of each of them these are going to be our toilets a final step in between the doors on course and all of them we're going to place a spruce wood door i'm just going to keep them open but it ends up looking something like this again that's going to be the left toilet complete so if you want to pause you're more than welcome to do so we're actually uh we'll punch out holes here just so it's a bit more light in here um and yeah that's going to be the left toilet heading around to the right side exact same logic applies so starting off in front of the ice we're going to have our uh, little sink area so it's going to be two stairs facing towards each other with one facing backwards to left and right side we're going to have an upside down stone brick stair with a gray carpet on each and that's as simple as that the sink slash mirror area for the actual toilets itself this time we're going to swap out to a lovely light blue terracotta um, and again in each corner we'll place on the second layer a two by two one block gap two by two one block gap two by two one block gap two by two of course we'll have to punch out the lights in the corners um, and underneath just as we did before underneath each one we'll place two stone slabs so again that's two stone slabs under each and we'll then place above two birch slabs on each one so two birch slabs on each one and then we'll go down diagonal in between link like so punch out the back ones and then we'll place three hoppers three iron trap doors on top of said hoppers three doors one two three open them all up and as simple as that that's going to be out right side bathroom so again please feel free to pause if you need to do so and then we're now going to swiftly move on to the next step in the tutorial which is going to be the kitchen area so let me once again clean out my inventory and we'll shoot on outside the building hopefully everyone's at the same point at this stage in the video if you aren't please feel free again to go back there is no harm in going back in the video seeing where things haven't gone quite to plan uh, and working from there there is no shame in that whatsoever uh, so again please do take your time it's easier to work it out now than it is to get later on in the video and feel that things have gone completely wrong and you've wasted a lot more time so the kitchen area this is going to require a few more blocks we're going to need cyan terracotta gray stained glass dispensers stone bricks, brown concrete, acacia logs, polished diorite, white concrete, yellow stained glass, polished andesite, stone brick stairs, quartz stairs, light blue stained glass, cobblestone walls, stone brick stairs, stone slabs, iron trap doors, wooden trap doors, we're going to need some cauldrons, grey carpet, a trip by hook, buttons, both of the stone and wooden variety. So let's head into the kitchen just for uh, kind of recollection purposes. It's straight ahead on the left side of the build. So this little area here with the diorite floor. Uh, for this, I'm also going to need polished, uh, not diorite, polished granite and also some terracotta uh, just in case I need to replace any of the floor panels that I put lighting in for the video purposes. So starting off, directly to the left of this sign terracotta in the floor, we're going to place one sign terracotta. We're then going to place a one grey stained glass, one stone brick slab, one cyan terracotta, and one grey stained glass. On top of this, we're going to place two iron trap doors. We'll place then one of our grey carpets, and we'll place two iron trap doors. What we're also then going to do is grab ourselves our cobblestone walls. Directly above the iron trap doors, we'll go all the way to the ceiling, and we'll build down one, two, one, two, leave a one block gap, and then another two by two. And underneath these, we'll place two iron trap doors. That's going to be kind of a little ventilation area uh, directly above the stoves. So that's the first part. Again, if you want to pause, you're more than welcome to do so. Next step, we're going to grab ourselves our stone slabs. We're going to come to the front corner directly next to the door. And from here, we're going to build up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten stone brick slabs, or stone slabs, should I say. We're then going to build one, two, three to the left, and then all the way down to the floor. Uh, so we have this kind of tall, almost door shape uh, like this. What we're then going to do is, on the upper half of all the blocks, we're going to place two stone slabs in the middle. This is going to become like a little mini shelving unit, uh, and it's going to look like this. To the left of this, we're going to grab ourselves our dispensers. We're going to jump up and crouch, and we're going to go one and two. And then directly in front of this, we'll leave a one block gap, one and two. And it will end up looking like this. This is going to be a dividing wall. So from here, on top of this, we're going to place one, two, three, four white concrete. On the white concrete here, we'll leave one block. We're then going to leave half a block. And we're going to place, and again, another block that I've not grabbed in by, into my inventory, a quartz slab. So on the block here, on the upper half, we're going to place a quartz slab. Above this, we're going to place one, two white concrete. And to the left of it, one, two, three, and four white concrete. And it's going to give you this little door arch area like this. What we're then going to do is crouching because obviously so we can place on the block in front of the dispenser we're going to place two of our quartz slab we're going to place one polished diorite to the left of this we're then going to go two quartz slabs to the left or three quartz slabs to the left sorry and one polished diorite and it's going to give you this kind of kitchen counter area of which we're going to place a row of gray carpet all the way around the perimeter as you can see and that's again going to be kind of a little tabletop area what we're then going to do, and I'm going to have to start off by replacing the granite in the corner, is place a row of one, two, three, four, five, six of our cobblestone walls. We're then going to grab ourselves our stone brick stairs and also our stone brick slabs. And starting off on the second layer, to the left, we're going to go stair upside down, slab on the upper half, stair upside down. We'll then leave a one block gap and we're going to go stair, slab, stair. We repeat this towards the right side. So again, exact same as the one before, there's a one block gap in between them and stair on the upper half. It's going to give you two additional shelving areas and it's going to end up looking like this. So that's kind of the right side of the kitchen, I guess you can say. Uh, what we'll then do is head over to the back left area where all this yellow concrete is. So starting off, we're going to grab ourselves our acacia wood. We're also going to need our stone buttons um, and also our wooden trap doors. We're going to start off on the back left corner by placing an acacia wood. We're then going to place two yellow stained glass, one acacia wood, two yellow stained glass, and one acacia wood. On top of the acacia woods, we're going to place a grey carpet, and in front of the two right acacia woods, we're going to place a stone button. In front of the yellow glass, we're going to place two wooden trap doors on each. Doesn't really matter which orientation, they're going to be folded down. What we're then going to do is we'll leave a one block gap and starting from the left side on this row here, we're going to grab ourselves our brown concrete and on the second and third block we'll place two brown, we'll leave a one block gap, two brown and a gap. Underneath these we'll place again two trap doors. On top of it we're going to grab ourselves our stairs. So we're going to place two stone brick stairs on each and then two upside down stone brick stairs on each and then directly above that we're going to place two stone bricks that's going to bring you all the way to the top again it's going to act as kind of like little ventilation area on top of the brown concrete or in front of it should i say we're going to place two stone buttons on each and then we're going to link up to kind of almost this ventilation shaft which is going to go around the outer top of the kitchen so for this we're going to need our polished andesite so let me grab the polished andesite and also our stone slabs and we'll also grab the iron trap door as well which is going to be kind of for the intersections Starting off on this left ventilation area here, we're going to go one, two, three forwards on the right side using our polished andesite. We're then going to place a stone slab block and we're going to go one, two forwards with a iron trap door on it. There should be a one block gap between the ventilation shaft we've just built and this kind of ventilation area here. To the left of it, we're going to go two to the left using polished andesite and to the right we're going to extend all the way across and above the shelving unit area we built previously. We're going to leave a five block gap and then on the sixth block here we're going to place another iron trap door and it ends up looking something like this. So again I'll give you a few different angles uh, just so you can see if I back up that's kind of as you can see again a little area running from those back cookers all the way to the front area and that's kind of again just reinforcing the idea of ventilation. What we're then going to do is grab ourselves our stone slabs 
and to this stone slab here that we placed previously we're going to go down one with two stone slabs we're also going to extend this three blocks to the right so we're going to do in total uh, I guess two slabs for each block and there's going to be uh, eight blocks in total I was about to say four blocks but there's two rows so hopefully uh, you get that underneath this we're going to place a row of four stone bricks uh, blocks and then either side of this, both the front side and rear side, we're going to place a row of four stone brick stairs. So again, this is going to be another kind of kitchen area. Underneath the stone brick stairs, we're going to place on each side four iron trap doors. So again, that's four iron trap doors on either side. And in the middle, we're going to place a row of four light blue glass. So again, that's four light blue glass. Underneath this, and this is where it's going to be tricky, uh, we're going to place a row of stone uh, slabs so again the double stone slabs as the blocks and underneath that we're going to place a row of four cyan terracotta so that's going to hit the floor ends up looking like this either side starting on the front side we're going to place one cyan terracotta we're then going to place a cauldron in front of the cauldron we're going to place a trip wire so again that's going to be like a little sink area and if you want to grab a bucket of water you're more than welcome to do so fill it all up Again, going to be a little sink. We'll then place two cyan terracotta. That's going to be the front side. And then for the rear side, we're going to place a row of four cyan terracotta. And then we're just going to place nice and simple two stone brick slabs in the middle. And that's going to be the rear of this area. So again, there should be a two block gap between the oven area and this area. And a two block gap between this area, I guess, with like fryers almost, and the sink area. And as you can see, kitchen looking pretty good. If you want to pause, you're more than welcome to do so. I'll give you a few different angles and then we'll swiftly move on. Because uh, again, really conscious as to how long this video will run. If we kind of dilly and dally around with all the different rooms. So another one ticked off the list. Uh, the next ones we're going to be working on is, of course, the corridors. Working our way back towards the office area. So you can see technically three rooms or areas remaining. So that's the corridors slash office area. Uh, also the utility room, very small room, and also Pirate's Cove, arguably the most difficult one uh, remaining. So for the corridors and office area, we are going to need black concrete, grey concrete, stone brick stairs, stone brick slabs, never brick stairs, never brick slabs, stone slabs, cobblestone wall, iron bars. We're also going to need dragon heads, with skull heads, signs, flower pots, and buttons. So again, if you want to grab those, that's perfect. Then we'll scoot into the building. And we're going to start off on the left corridor at the front left corner. So in this area here, we're going to leave a one block gap. We'll place two black concrete and then go up one on the left. From here, we're going to grab ourselves out with skeleton skulls. And we're going to place two skulls facing towards the wall. What we're then going to do is grab ourselves out ender dragon skull. We'll leave a one block gap and we'll place one facing kind of at an angle. As you can see here, half into the wall. And to the right of this, we're going to place a row of one, two, or should I say a pillar, three, four, five six so replace the stone brick slab there and that's going to go all the way up to the ceiling we're then going to leave a two block gap and place a second pillar so again replace the stone brick slab at the top and leave a two block gap again and place a third pillar so again three pillars of black concrete that's going to be going from the floor to the ceiling once we head over to the far end of the corner uh the far end of the corridor should i say we're also going to place one in the back corner so again, place a block, replacing it uh, in the corner of the stone slab. And in this middle area here, we're going to grab ourselves, I don't know why I'm chucking those away, uh, our stone brick slabs and our stone brick stairs. We'll start off by leaving a one block gap from this one on the left. And we're going to place an upside down stone brick stair, followed by a slab, followed by a stone brick stair. And above, we'll do the exact same. So it's going to be a stair facing either way and then an upside down slab in the middle, three block gap on the right, one block gap on the left. And that's going to be the left side of the corridor. No particular detail on this side. Again, that's completely fine. Uh, obviously, there's a bit of space limitation. Uh, so we're just going to keep the detail on this side. If we head on now into the office area, we're going to start off. Uh, we'll have to replace these lights in the corner and not trash <laughs> whoops <laughs> that's not what i meant to do um we're gonna replace the white concrete uh, just so we don't trash the place we're then gonna place either side on front of the window area two upside down never brick stairs and in the middle a three by two area of never brick slabs on the upper half on top of this on the second block we'll place a black concrete in terms of detail and again not meaning to do that 
uh, we're going to grab the dragon heads and we're going to place one, two facing in towards the wall. So they're going to be like almost TV monitors at this point. We'll leave a one block gap and place one black concrete. In terms of additional detail, we'll grab ourselves our wither skeleton skulls. Facing back towards the wall, we're going to place one towards the wall. And then in front of that, we'll place one kind of at a side angle. And to the left of this, we'll place a very nice and elegant, simplistic, some would say, flower pot right in the middle. So it's going to be the office area here. What we'll then do is in the middle, so this black concrete here, we'll leave a one, two block gap. And on this third block, the black concrete, we'll place a never brick stair facing towards the desk, of course. Uh, a sign on each side for the armrests. And that's going to be as simple as that. A nice little uh, chair for the, obviously, security guard to sit in. Next step, we'll grab ourselves our uh, grey concrete. Back left corner and back right, we're going to place a grey concrete. And in between the floor and the ceiling, we're going to place one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four of our cobblestone balls. In between this, we're going to grab ourselves our stone brick stairs. On the second layer, we're going to place stone brick stair, stone slab, stone brick stair. And above this, on the left side, we're going to place one, two, three iron bars to the right. And down one using cobblestone wall. And again, just small details on the rear side of the wall. Again, that's the rear side of the office. And then I'll swivel around and show you the front side. If you want to pause, you're more than welcome to do so. Feel free to also, again, chuck some more lights in here if you want. Uh, just to brighten it up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we're now going to head into the final corridor. This part here. Uh, and then, of course, we'll crack on with the little uh, storage room. Or utility room, I guess you'd say. Uh, and then that leaves us with one final thing. Of course, Pirate's Cove. So for this corridor here, we're going to start off at the entrance way. Uh, another thing that I've almost forgot to do is we're going to need to add yellow black uh, carpet at the sides. And we'll do that on the other side as well before we forget. Uh, but starting off, we're going to place one, two, three, four, five of our uh, cobblestone walls with a black concrete on top. So again, that re involves replacing the stone brick stairs. And again, on this side, one, two, three, four, five cobblestone walls. On the side here, so the side towards the utility room, on this white concrete, we're going to go one, two, so two iron bars. We're then going to bring it one forwards to the right one, and then we're going to go up and to the right one, and it's going to link up with the red concrete like so. Now, this side is slightly more complicated than the other side in terms of detail. We're going to start off here on top of the black concrete by placing another uh, kind of outer doorway so for this we're going to need sign terracotta which of course i have forgotten we're going to place one two three four one two three to left and then down that's going to be a, another doorway and then in between here we're just going to do an inner ring of cobblestone walls i know this is kind of the utility room but it's not the end of the world we're also then going to grab ourselves our stone buttons and we'll do a solid ring of stone buttons all the way around the door as you can see right there so that's going to be the door area from here, we're going to start working our way towards the left side. So, we are going to start off on top of the second uh, sign terracotta here by placing an iron bar. And on top of this, we're going to place a stone, uh, a never brick stair, sorry, towards the left. We're then, underneath this, on the upper half of the block, going to place a never brick slab. And then to the left of this, we're going to place a never brick stair, again, facing towards the right side. Underneath the stair, we're going to place two iron bars, and that's going to be the first little banner or bunting area, I guess you'll call it. We're going to leave one stone brick stair, and we're going to punch out one, two, three of the uh, slabs. We're going to place another brick stair towards the left. Underneath, on the upper half of the block, a slab, and one towards the right. And underneath the one on the right, we're going to place two iron bars. To the left of this, we're going to place three cobblestone walls, and then we're going to rinse and repeat, so one, two, three of the... Uh, slabs, we're going to place stair, slab, and stair. And underneath the stair, we're going to place this time just one iron bar. Uh, but again, it's important to have it. On the right side, we'll place one, two, three this time. Uh, so it's going to go down to the white concrete. For the next step, we're going to again punch out this slab. And we're going to go one, two, three, uh, four of our cobblestone walls. We're then going to place to the right of this another brick stair towards the left. Punch out that. Place a never brick slab, and in the top corner, we're going to place a pillar of black concrete, and that's going to go all the way down to the floor, and it's going to end up looking something like this. Now, one thing we've almost uh, not done is at the bottom, we're going to start from the bottom left corner, we'll leave one block gap, we're going to place two black concrete, go up one, it's going to link up with the cobblestone wall. We'll then leave a one block gap, we'll place two more, 
Go up on the left, and on the left side, we're going to place a lovely old flower pot. And on the right side, we're going to grab ourselves a wither skeleton skull, and we're going to place one facing back towards the wall. We're then going to once again leave a two block gap, and we're going to place one, two, three, black concrete, go up one in the middle. And on the top center one, we're going to place a wither skeleton skull facing towards the wall. And on the right side one, again, I need to stop shift clicking these uh, heads onto my character. We're going to place a ender dragon skull, again, facing towards the wall. Just a small little detail, uh, but makes it look a bit more interesting. So if I back up, again, I'll do a little fly pass just so you can pause if you need to do so. That's going to be that side of the corridor. Again, relatively detailed um, compared to the other side, but nothing too much. If we come to the back corner, we're going to replace, again, the corner here with a pillar of black concrete. And what we're going to do from here is very similar to what we did on the other side. So we're going to start out by punching out this uh, stone slab here and the second one. On the second one, we'll place a never brick stair facing towards the black concrete, and then we'll place a slab down diagonal. We'll leave this one, punch out one, two, three, and again, rinse and repeat between the never brick stairs and the slab one block down. And we're going to do this all the way across. So one block, one, two, three, again, stair, slab, and stair. One block, one, two, three, and again, stair, slab, and stair. So again, you get the idea, this is going all the way across uh, until we get to this point here when there's four remaining and we'll just keep it with our stone brick slabs. So again, that's going to be the other side of the corridor. Very, very simple at the top. If you want to pause, please feel free to do so. And what we're going to do is, once again, clear our inventory because we are going to be moving on to the second to last stage, which is going to be the utility room. So let me head on outside uh, to grab the materials we're going to need. And this is going to be, of course, the second to last one. So it's going to be the black chest. You're going to need sand terracotta, hay bales, spruce wood stairs, spruce wood slabs, cobblestone walls, spruce fence, never brick fence, cauldrons, and stone buttons. So nicely uh, organized for the inventory purposes. We're going to shoot into the area here. Of course, we've already fixed up the door a little bit. However, we will, on the inner layer, do a nice perimeter of stone buttons as we've done on the outer layer. What we're also going to do is we're going to crack on straight away to the left of the door. Uh, and again, this is not ideal because of the way I've put the uh, lights in the floor. We're going to place, uh, starting on the left side, we'll leave one block gap. We'll place upside down spruce wood stair and we're going to place three of them. So three upside down. We're then going to leave one block gap and place again three upside down like so. And in the middle, on the upper half of the block, we're going to place three spruce wood slabs. And that's going to give you this kind of nice um storage area storage shelves i guess you could say to the right of this we're going to leave one two block gap we're then going to place a hay bale and a cauldron and on top of the hay bale we're going to place two spruce fences on top of the cauldron two nether brick fences like so in terms of the final detail uh in this block here we'll punch it out and we're going to place a wither skeleton skull uh this is completely optional but i've just noticed probably would look good a wither skeleton skull facing towards the back corner and as simple as that, that's going to be this room complete. So again, if you want to pause, please feel free to do so. Of course, the majority of the work is the shelving unit. Uh, and then after that, it's pretty much just the door. So again, utility room. And uh, that brings us now to the final room, which is not the easiest, uh, we will say. And that's going to be the Pirate's Cove room. So if we head out, that's going to be, of course, the red chest, the final chest. For this, you'll need purple wall, black concrete, black stained glass panes, yellow stained glass panes, purple, dark oak, never brick, stone brick, uh, stairs, all of them, cobblestone wall, anvils, hoppers, stone slabs, wooden trap doors, sign carpet, purple carpet, signs and buttons. And again, I'll give you guys a second to pause here, grab them blocks into your inventory. Then what we'll do is we'll shoot on in on the right side of the building, of course, because this is where the Pirate's Cove door is. If you haven't already, do a solid ring of buttons around the outer area. What we're also going to do is crack on with a sign in the middle. So in line with this first row here, we'll leave one, two, and on the third block, place a sign. Um, normally, you type sorry out of order um, because that's, of course, what the sign says. Um, but because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered typing, we're just going to put sorry for now. But again, you'll probably want to put sorry out of order if you're trying to keep this uh, as accurate as possible. On top of the sign, we're going to place a yellow sign. Uh, a yellow glass pane uh, for some reason it's not actually let me do that so what we'll do instead is we're going to cheat we'll get rid of our sign we'll place a yellow stained glass pane and then we'll replace the sign 
Uh, we'll just leave it blank for now. What we're going to do is to right of this, we're going to place a black stained glass pane. We're then going to go up one with a yellow one and to the right with a black one. Behind the yellow one, we're going to place a black stained glass pane. To the left of it, we'll place a yellow. We're then going to go up with a black and then to the left with a yellow and it's going to give this kind of diagonal danger tape uh, going around the entrance. Of course, that is intentional. That's what we want to do. If we scoot past the danger tape and we come into here, we can get rid of our yellow and black glass. Uh, we're going to work on the detail behind the door first and then we'll crack on with the other stuff. So starting off, we're going to come to the left corner and we'll leave a two block gap and then do a solid row of cobblestone walls all the way to the ceiling. And we'll do the exact same on the right side. So one block gap from the door and do a solid pillar of cobblestone walls all the way to the ceiling. Again, small detail, but very, very nice. We're going to add two tables in this area. So we're going to use our never brick stairs. And once again, I've forgotten the slabs. I have a real thing of forgetting slabs at the moment for some reason. Uh, we're going to grab ourselves our dark oak stairs. And starting from the cobblestone wall here, we'll go one, two to the right and one to the left and place a stair facing like this. We'll then leave a one, two block gap and place a stair. And in front of the stairs, of course, we're going to place our never brick stairs, two in the middle. And then what we're going to do is do a solid row of one, two, three, four of our never brick slabs on the upper half of the block. We're then going to do a row of random blocks. We'll just do black concrete uh, just so we can bounce off the upper facing uh, never brick stairs for the edge of the table. As you can see, it's three blocks wide and four blocks thick. And then we're going to alternate between the purple and cyan. So starting off on the left side, we're going to place three cyan carpet, three purple, three cyan and three purple like so. For the final chairs, we're going to grab ourselves our dark oak wood stairs and on the edges, so this side towards the wall and away from the wall, we're going to place two final chairs. There will not be any chairs here, uh, just to kind of point that out. And on top of all the chairs, we're going to grab ourselves a wooden trap door. And again, whoops, make sure you're doing it like this so that you have the backer, uh, the back of the seat upright uh, just to make it look a bit more realistic. We're then going to do the exact same one block behind it. So we'll leave a one block gap. We're then going to, as I said, have a table here. Um, so we'll mimic the chairs for now. So again, there's going to be a chair here. So two block gap. We'll then leave a two block gap, place one, two block gap and place one here. And again, vice versa all the way around. Uh, we won't place two there, of course. Uh, then what we'll do, just like before, is we'll place a row of four never brick stairs, followed by four never brick slabs, followed by a row of blocks, just so we can place the final stairs. So again, four stairs. And just like before, we're going to alternate between the uh, purple and cyan. So we're going to start off this time with purple, and then going towards the wall, cyan purple cyan and on each of the chairs of course add a trap door for the back area and it ends up looking something like this so again if you want to pause you are more than welcome to do so the next step we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves our anvil and we're going to in line with the edges of the table so going towards the back wall we'll leave a one block gap and then we're going to place an anvil and exact same on this side on the far corner one block away from the wall one block gap anvil on top of that, we're going to place, whoops, this way you're going to have to crouch, a cobblestone wall. And we're going to do that all the way to the ceiling, uh, like so. So again, all the way to the ceiling, exact same on this one here. So we're going to go all the way, whoops, crouching, just so we can actually place it on top of the anvil. We're going to go all the way to the ceiling, and it's going to end up looking something like this. So quite uh, a small, cozy room, but lots going on. The next step we're going to do is the actual foxy's kind of area. Uh, so we're going to start off in the middle here in between the chairs. We'll leave a one, two, and then on the third block, place a black concrete. We're going to go one to left and one to right. We're then going to go diagonal to left, diagonal to right, diagonal to left, and right again on either side. And you're going to end up with something like this. We're going to punch out this area here and we're going to fill it all in with black concrete. So again, all in with black concrete. And on top of this, we're going to start layering up the actual kind of purple uh, curtain area so again we'll start adding layers we're going to start off on the front side using our purple wall we'll also grab ourselves our purple stained glass panes we're going to build up so we'll leave a one block gap and on here we're going to build up one two three we're then going to go one two to the right and down one two so it's going to give you a nice little doorway 
On top of it, we're also going to build up and to the left, up and to the right. In the middle, we're going to place one, two of our purple stained glass uh, paint, and then we're going to build the surrounding area all the way to the ceiling. And we're going to do the exact same above the glass. So we'll place two purple wool directly above the glass. For the purpose of the video, I appreciate it's probably a bit dark. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to whack two little sea lanterns in the corner. Again, that's not part of the design. Uh, so don't copy me. It's just purely so you can see the video a little bit easier. So again, that's what it currently looks like from the front side. If we head around to the corners, what we're going to do is in this bottom left corner, we're going to place a row of three purple stained glass panes. And then to the left of this, we're going to place one, two purple wall. And we're going to build this all the way up like so to the top. And then what we're going to do is on the third layer, we're going to place one purple wall on the left side and one glass pane. And then we'll on top of this place two. And we're gonna, again going to do this all the way to the top. And it ends up looking something like this. On the right side, exact same logic applies. So we start off in the corner by placing three stained glass panes. Uh, we'll then place purple wall all the way to the top. So a two wide area. And then on the third row, on the right block, we're going to place a purple wall. On the left block, a purple stained glass. And again, purple wall all the way to the top side. Ends up looking like this. Uh, and that's going to be the little uh, kind of curtain area. What we will do is we're going to add an outer ring uh, using our never brick stairs and slabs. So we're going to start off uh, by placing in front of the uh, area here. On the front side, we'll leave a one block gap. We'll place three purple wall. And underneath this, we're going to place three never brick slabs. In front of it, we're going to place never brick stairs. So we're going to place three never brick stairs. We're then going to go one to the left and one to the right. And we're going to follow around the edge. We're going to go to the side, to the right. Whoops, this is getting in the way. To the side, again, to the right. And then to the side twice until it hits the back wall, like so. Once it hits the back wall, we'll actually replace the back one. And we'll place a full never brick block, like so. Exact same logic on the left side. So we'll extend to the side, to the left, to the side, to the left, to the side. And for the final block, place a full never brick slab and that's going to bring it all the way up to the ceiling it's going to give you the kind of the finished polished look um, and as i said once you've done that that's going to be the area complete if you want to add some detail on the actual inside and what i'll do is i'm going to add a light in here as well just for tutorial purposes uh, we'll pop that there what you can do is grab yourselves some stone slabs and we'll place two stone slabs um, and that's made the lighting a little bit funky uh, so we'll place another one there um, We'll then place an anvil to the right of it. Above the anvil, we're going to place one, two cobblestone walls. To the left of that, we're going to place a hopper facing into the wall, followed by a cobblestone wall to the left of that. Directly here, we're going to place a dark oak stair. We'll also grab ourselves on top of this a wooden trapdoor, just as a kind of little back. Again, it's a little claustrophobic in here, so uh, you don't have to go too crazy with the detail, but... We'll add some nonetheless. What we'll then do is directly above the hopper, we'll add another hopper. To the left and right, we'll add an anvil. Above that, we're going to place a row of three cobblestone walls. And then above that, we're going to place three anvils. What you can also do is if you want, uh, in the inner parts, you can actually punch out some of the purple at the sides just to give you a little bit more space. Uh, to the left of the anvils, I'm going to place uh, two hoppers. And we'll do the exact same on this side. And then we can also, uh, directly underneath the hoppers, uh, we'll leave a one block gap. And on the lower half, we'll place two slabs either side as well. And that's just a little bit more detail to go in here. Completely uh, not needed, but still looks pretty cool nonetheless. Uh, we'll punch out that light. We'll leave that one. In fact, no, we won't because it makes it look a little odd. Um, we will make a compromise and we'll grab a black carpet and uh, pop one in the corner. And again... Bear in mind the lighting that I've been doing just for tutorial purposes, uh, but it does give you this cool light kind of coming through and you can see some of the detail in the actual room. Uh, the final thing we'll do is we'll add a sign out the front. Um, so again, just a sorry out of order sign. I'm not going to do the actual typing because I don't want to bore you, uh, but we'll pop right in the middle center here a sign and we're going to put a big old sorry. Um, and again, I won't type out the rest, but that's up to you if you want to. Uh, let's get a nice exclamation mark and yeah once you've done that that is going to wrap up the Pirates Cove area 
So that wraps up the video. Again, I really do hope you enjoyed. I appreciate, again, another super lengthy video. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this build series and now you have your very own FNAF restaurant, including the walls, interior, everything. Uh, this is not something I've really done on the channel before where I've done a full massive build in various parts. Normally it's in one or two parts, generally the exterior and then one video for the interior. But of course, I hope you appreciate, uh, given the level of detail and complexity with this, uh, it had to be separated into different videos. So I really do hope you enjoyed. Again, if you did, a like is very much appreciated if you haven't already. And again, I really do emphasize the number. You're part of the 90%. You heard right, 90% of people watching this video that have not subscribed. First off, very upset with you. But second off, you have the chance to redeem yourself. Simply hit the subscribe button. It is very much appreciated. And again, we are rapidly coming towards the 100,000 subscriber mark. So everyone subscribing it is greatly appreciated. Really, really excited to be getting my hands on hopefully one of these silver play buttons. Uh, that's been kind of a long-term goal. So again, really do appreciate all the support with that. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated. Again, a lot of work went into this series. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, and again, I want to give credit where credit is due again to feed designers so that's going to be infinite vault or jplays mc satori imran is cool aka sni minecraft and also taco poopy all worked super super hard on this build um, and again i really do appreciate them sharing it with the community through my tutorials uh, but yeah that pretty much wraps it up that is the fnaf one restaurant uh, and again if you want to see any of the other ones fnaf two three four or any of the other buildings, um, again, please do let me know down in the description, or in the comments, not the description. Uh, check out the description if you haven't seen part one or two. Not sure you would have made it this far if you hadn't. Uh, again, if you want to join the Minecraft server where we design and build a lot of these awesome builds, that's going to be tantonetwork.com. So again, that's a Minecraft PC server free to join. Come join myself. Satori, Imran is cool, aka SNI Minecraft, and also Taco Poopy and all the other great builders, Red X Phones, etc., etc., on the server. Again, that's tantonetwork.com. Discord server, again, linked in the description if you want to join that. Again, completely free to join. Uh, hang out with myself and all the other builders. And then finally, again, if you play Fortnite or use the Epic Games Store, Gummy, so G U M M M Y Y Y, free M's and free Y's on the supporter creator. Every time you purchase anything, whether that's a skin, an emote, a battle pass, anything at all, doesn't cost you anything extra, not a penny, uh, but it does help support the channel and it means that I can continue doing this as a job. So much, much appreciated. But of course, just a subscription is really all I ask. Again, if you haven't hit the subscription button, please do race to 100k. Hashtag gummy to 100k. But anyways, apart from that, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, my name has been Tom Gummy, and goodbye. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire. But it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true Baby, let the light shine through If you believe it's true Baby, won't you let the light